Uh, with this presentation, I'll demonstrate how to create um, an interactive estimate as opposed to an estimate uh, created from imported um, data. Um, just before we get into that, though, a couple of things. Um, every estimate has to have a job ID. And if it's a new client, you will need to create, or a new job, you'll need to create the new ID. Um, if it's a, a repeat job for the same client or the same job, so in fact, you might have a client who's a real estate agent, and for that real estate agent, you do maintenance on several different properties. The same, the client would be the same, i.e. the uh, real estate agent, but the jobs would be different. For example, each estimate, when created, has its own individual job ID. So that means that the estimate for each separate job is identified by its job ID, but uh, by its estimate number, I should say, but the uh, job ID um, tells you that it's for this one particular client. So having explained that, moving on now, we'll go directly to estimating. This is the estimate list dialog. On here you will see all previous estimates and current estimates, um, provided they're not um, made not present, so the status is that they're visible. If you remove the, uh, the tick or from the uh, checkbox here, you'll find that they'll no longer be visible on the screen, but that doesn't mean they've been deleted. So to create a new estimate interactively, we click on the Create a New Estimate button. We're asked which client it's for. We'll just use this one. <coughs> this is the estimate uh, dialog box or where we create our estimates. Add an item button. This is choosing items directly from the price list. Add an assembly. Create um, or add items into the estimate from an assembly. Edit the rate or description of the item once it's in the estimate. Edit the quantity of the item. Delete the item. That's an individual item. Switch the item. In other words, if we had in here, for example, um, a passage door, a, a flush panel passage door, and we wanted it to become um, a uh, colonial passage door of the same size, we'd use a switch button to change it. Um, we could easily change its description and its rate if you knew what those were. Uh, but you can switch them from an item already in the price list. Um, round the quantities is the last um, option before you do your estimate and as you round the quantities up to the purchase, purchasable amounts so that when the purchase order is generated, uh, what you're purchasing is what you can buy. In other words, if, if the estimate says you have 12.25 um, lengths of trench mesh, you can't buy 12.25, so rounding would round that up to 13. So let's add an item. Price list opens. Here in front of us at the moment, I've got this filtered on um, Timber 1A, which is my standard sawn hardwood. If I look in here, and I'll see um, 75 by 38 hardwood. Now, for example, if I wanted to buy some, some uh, fence rails, for example, I could easily choose this item. Now, while that row is selected, I can click on either, I can put in here how many metres of the material I wanted, but we would not get a cut list. And so I could say I wanted 120 metres of it and just say select, which means that we'd be ordering it in random lengths. If I use the calculator, add using the calculator, if I go back to this item here again, I can either click on that button add using a calculator or I can double left click using the mouse on the ID which I'll do here and it opens up the input dialog. Now here we're asked for how many at what length. Now say we wanted um, 20 at uh, 4.8 there's the cut length. Now if I want to put in linear amounts so I just wanted 20 meters of this material I click on the linear button the quantity will always go to 1 and we'll ask for the quantity here or 
how many meters we want to buy of it. If I put in here 20 meters, when I add this to the list, it'll round it to the 0.3 of a length. So in other words, because you buy timber in 0.3 increments in hardwood, it'll add it'll round that up to the purchasable amount. So in fact, the saying we'll need to pay for and buy 20.1 meters. So now those items have been uh, selected. We say, you'll notice they're not in the estimate as yet. So we'll say close. And now I'll just shut down the lookup dialog here. There's no need to do this. We can go on and continue select items. I just want to make this point as we go. If I look at this description here now and say edit the description, you'll see here that these are the cut lengths we input for that particular material. And those cut lengths have been added to the description here. Now, if at this point, we wanted to change the rate or that description, we could easily do that. Um, we could come up here and type in here uh, CCA treated. Put CCA treated in there. And knowing the rate for that, say it costs $7.50, uh, we can accept those changes now. And the, the uh, description of the item and the rate has changed. The quantity doesn't. It's just the rate and the description. Now you can do that with any item you want um, once they're in the estimate here. So you've got total and absolute control over what happens with these particular items. Let's add another item. Um, I will add an assembly here. Now say for argument's sake we're wanting to put some internal wall frame in here. Um, I click on the uh, button, add an assembly. I'm going to add this as an assembly. Um, so if I click up here and say I want uh, I for internal walls, now I get a list of all the internal walls. So you see this one internal wall 2400 high, 70 by 35, MGP 10, 450 centers for the studs. If I want to know what's in that assembly, I can double left click on here. That will tell me nothing that allows me to put the quantity in. View the assembly components is what I should have clicked on. That tells you what's included in that assembly. So if you look at the description here, 70 by 35 empty 10, studs of 450 central, single bottom plate, 10 millimeter plasterboard both sides, etc, etc. Uh, so there's your description of the item and these are the items making up the actual assembly. Now to add the item in is what I meant to do before with the double left click. So if I double left click up here, it asks me how many meters of that wall there are. Now there's a couple of ways we can put this information in. For example, if we had a building that was 21 meters long, I will say, so we had four different walls. So we had one wall that was 7.2 meters long. We add that, and you'll notice that we've had one transaction entered. The last value ended was 7.2, the total so far 7.2. And we've got another wall here that's uh, 3.6, add that. Now we've had two transactions, the last one entered was 3.6, the total so far. So you can continue to put these in and have them calculated and totaled as you go. Or if you've taken them off using a calculator and you know that you've got 56 metres of it, you can say add so you end up with 66.8 metres. Now when you say update and return, you'll notice it doesn't add the, the, into the estimate here. So we'll say update and return. What it does is it places it in the quantity calculated field down here. When you're adding assemblies, you do need to click on select and return. So we'll say select and return. And now if I close that down, you'll see that there is the original item we chose from the price list. Now, what happened with that assembly is that the assembly was constructed using the individual quantities for each of the items for one meter of wall. So what the system does when you enter the 66.8 total meters, it extrapolates those quantities across all of the items which make up part of that particular estimate, uh, that particular assembly. So here are the items. So you'll see your connector plates has got 1.02. As I said before, that's not a purchasable quantity. 
So for example, if we need to, we can round these up. Now imagine we'd finished the estimate. Um, we would click on round the quantity before we produce the purchase order. Um, just to demonstrate how you can accumulate these items here. Um, if I was to use another assembly that had similar items, so if I say add an assembly, and we'll come back up here and say I for internal walls again, this was the one we used before. Now say if we've got this particular wall down here, we've got a wall that's 2700 high out of 90 B35, uh, now I want to find something. No, that'll do. That one will do. So if I double click here and say I've got uh, 30 metres of this and select some of these items here will be used uh, again. So in fact if we look at this, we'll see this bullnose here will probably be um, the same bullnose used on the, the incoming assembly. So you see here at the moment it's got 140.4 metres of that bull nose. If I may now say select and return, just keep an eye on that. And now, if we look at that bull nose, it's 205.2. So what happens is that as you add items into the estimate, if they already be, uh, are part of the estimate, then the quantities are accumulated. So in fact, if I was to go to this particular um, uh, bull nose here and I'll go edit the rate and description you'll notice that they're the cut lengths and here is the the cut lengths that's been made up 38 point at 5.4 38 lengths at 5.4 for the wall lengths that we've input so far so the description is updated as we go um, if I want to change the rate, as I said before, I can change the rate there or I can change the description of the item up here as well. So in fact, if that skirting I decided it wasn't going to be 16 mil, it was going to be 12, I could edit it here, change the rate and say accept and return. Uh, but probably the best thing to do is if we look at this quantity, this item here now, and while I have that row selected and I say switch the item, and I'll say I want um, uh, 42 by 12 there should be some skirting in here we'll say this 68 by 12 colonial skirting as opposed to the 42 by 16 so if I choose that on and I say apply the switch it changes it here but it doesn't put the cut lengths in so if I say edit this again they're the cut lengths I simply click on here well it automatically puts it in when you go to the edit mode so there you have it so we can change the actual item to a different material using the switch button now just an estimate will be made up of several or many items you might select from the uh, price list or many assemblies you might use within the estimate um, let, let's just add a couple more then. Uh, we'll say add and I'll come up here and we'll say doors. Now this is a door we made. Remember when we did the, or if you haven't looked at the, the uh, creating an assembly uh, video, this is the assembly I created when we did that. If I double click on here and say I've got uh, 10 of these doors, add to the total, update and select and in goes all the materials for the doors. So you can see how you can accumulate or create your, um, your estimate and accumulate all the items required for your estimate by adding either items from the uh, price list or assemblies. I won't make this video too long, so we'll leave it at that. But finally, before we go any further, I will round the quantities. Now let's have a look at something here. Connector plates. One point, these are in boxes of 100 so if I look here or 50 or whatever they're purchased in I need 1.458 and you'll notice the price of this estimate so far if I say round the quantity you'll notice that that and uh, those masonry nails will round as well so watch so around the quantity I'll move this over here and you'll see these quantities round up to their purchasable quantities. So now we need to buy two boxes of those and one box of those. It didn't round the hours because that uh, item there is a set number of hours. 
So that's how you um, create an interactive estimate. Um, I will be using this uh, information here um, in creating the orders, but to keep this video at a smaller size, I'll end this video here.